end of 2020 when Brian Rabbit, the then acting AG with USDOJ, um, he was at a conference and I, I'm just going to quote him. He said, notably, many of DOJ's corporate resolutions in 2020 included coordination with one or more foreign enforcement authorities, an increasingly important aspect of DOJ's work. This is Tom Fox. In October, Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco gave a keynote speech at the American Bar Association's 36th National Institute on White Collar Crime. Her remarks reframed a discussion about the uses of reason for and perceptions on independent monitors and monitorships. Monaco's remarks should be studied by every compliance professional as they portend a very large change in the way the Department of Justice will use monitors going forward. Over this five-part podcast series sponsored by Affiliated Monitors, we will consider why Monaco's remarks herald a new era for monitorships. In other words, it is not your father's monitor. We will look at change in monitorships from the white-collar enforcement and defense perspective from Bethany Hengsbach. Mikhail Ryder-Gordon will look at the global aspects of new DOJ monitor focus. Christina Ravello will discuss how ethics and compliance assessments help drive more compliant companies. Jesse Kaplan brings his views on the twin topics of antitrust and healthcare compliance. And in part five, we conclude with Affiliated Monitors founder, Vin DeCiani, who looks at where monitors and monitor ships are going in 2022 and beyond. First, a word about our sponsor, Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors was the first company in the United States to focus on providing top quality, independent integrity monitoring and assessment services across a wide range of regulated industries and professions. What distinguishes AMI professionals from others is that monitoring is AMI's business. It is not a sideline to some other professional practice or service. AMI has been the corporate integrity monitor for more than 850 matters involving large multinational companies and individual practitioners. For more information, check out their website, www.affiliatedmonitors.com. In episode two, I am joined by Mikhail Ryder Gordon, and we will look at the global aspects of the new DOJ monitor refocus. I know you'll enjoy this episode. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back for another episode of Not Your Father's Monitor. Today, I have with me Mikhail Ryder Gordon with Affiliated Monitors, and we're going to take a look at uh, monitorships and some broader issues that Mikhail sees from her truly international perspective. So, Mikhail, first of all, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Oh, Tom, it is always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, to be back on the Compliance Podcast Network. So thank you for uh, for having me. Uh, so one of the things that uh, kind of preceded uh, Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco's speech was last, uh, I believe in last June, <clears throat> the uh, president uh, issued a national security directive. And for the first time, listing corruption as a national security interest of the United States. And I know you see it in a, in a broader format, but what do you see really from the Biden administration on a much more macro level than we've seen in previous administrations? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And uh, despite it being Thanksgiving week, I'm not going to talk Turkey. I'm, I'm going to get into some substantive issues here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to start by by harkening back to uh, a little bit later in 2020, the, the very end of 2020, when Brian Rabbit, the then acting AG with USDOJ, um, he was at a conference, and I, I'm just going to quote him. He said, notably, many of DOJ's corporate resolutions in 2020 included coordination with one or more foreign enforcement authorities, an increasingly important aspect of DOJ's work. And since then, in the past 11 months, since that rabbit made that statement, I think it's reasonable to say U.S. regulators have progressively coordinated with foreign enforcement authorities uh, to resolve multi-jurisdictional corruption and money laundering cases and other white-collar crimes. And I'd even say 
The cross-jurisdictional approach has really gained traction in 21. I mean, we just we don't have the Biden administration just signaling that the U.S. is going, uh, DOJ is going to to crack down. I mean, he's really he's been signaling it's an offensive to root out global corruption. So I know, I know we have a little bit of a compliant industry echo chamber, right? We were all at Twitter with Lisa Monaco's speech at ABA White Collar Crime last week, uh, discussing the big changes coming. But uh, another really, you know, a couple of other noteworthy signs out there that compliance officers at companies probably needing to hire compliance officers should pay close attention to. Uh, Look at DOJ's John Carlin's interview with the Financial Times two weeks ago. For those who missed it, Carlin said, quote, you'll see cases in the weeks to come. And he's referring to this pending crackdown on corporate crime. And the administration has made it clear that they think this is long overdue. Carlin drew particular attention to two types of companies. The first, those who violated their DPAs. And the second, those companies who are failing to invest in compliance systems that are now in all practicality mandatory. And we take Carlin's words and Rabbit and Monaco's and we look at the renewed focus on corporate malfeasance and at U.S. legislation recently passed or proposed. I'm talking about Corporate Transparency Act, the Enablers Act, Foreign Corruption Accountability Act, Combating Global Corruption Act, Golden Visa Accountability Act, Justice for Victims of Kleptocracy Act, and we look at the Congressional Caucus Against Foreign Corruption and Kleptocracy, which is aimed at addressing and educating on the cross-jurisdictional nature of foreign corruption and examining ways to combat kleptocracy. And these are all part of a repositioning of how we view money laundering, corruption, kleptocracy. The U.S. is saying Combating these scourges, they're at the core of U.S. national security interest. I mean, we we really woke up here. You know, listeners of the Compliance Podcast Network know that, you know, these forms of crimes are transnational in nature. If we look at the U.K.'s International Anti-Corruption Coordination Center, it may have launched in 2017, but now it's really coming into its own. And we marry this shift in attitude in the U.S. about bribery, money laundering, corporate transparency. Thank you, Pandora Papers. You know, companies may want to take a hard look at their corporate compliance programs and assess just how robust and effective they truly are. If you're a corporation currently under a DPA and a monitor wasn't imposed, but you aren't certain how well you're meeting the terms of your settlement agreement, Really, well, you know, now may be the time to seek out an independent assessment. You know, this may come as a surprise to some who think monitoring is all about playing gotcha. It's kind of the last thing it is. I'm going to make a little plug for my firm, Affiliated Monitors, but it's the antithesis of what we do when we serve as a monitor. I mean, one of our greatest assets is independence. We're highly qualified individuals. We bring objectivity and, well, Tom, you know me, blunt honesty (laughs) to, to the organizations we monitor. You know, during the duration of the monitoring period, this can result in some truly remarkable compliance progress for a company we're working with. And monitoring is all we do. We tailor it to each entity with the end goal that at the end of the monitorship, that organization is capable of sustaining a culture of genuine integrity. And Carlin warned companies that there would be, quote, serious consequences and instructed corporate America, quote, now is the time to get the house in order. Focus on compliance because there are going to be tough enforcement actions coming out of the DOJ if you don't do so, end quote. So, Mikhail, let me pick up on a couple of words you used because they really intrigue me. The first one was independent. And why is the independence of the monitor so critical? And the second word you just used, quoting uh, John Carlin, I believe, which is integrity. So why is an independent integrity monitor equally important. When we talk about independence, is that it's a neutral, impartial evaluator. You don't want the company that wants to really get on your good side in in the sense that they're going to try to sell you services down the line, right? Whether it's a law firm or consultancy that offers a range of services, they may be looking at an entity that they want to offer monitoring to, but they're they're thinking down the road. Oh, we can sell them more services. So let's Let's handle them 
gently, lightly. Let's not tell them the truth. We don't want to offend them. We want them to hire us later for all this other work. You can't have independence that way. You, you can't be honest and, and, and really kind of blunt and say, look, this is what you're going to need to do to meet the spirit of that settlement agreement. And these are the changes that have to happen. And, and a company needs to internalize that. And they, they need to hear it from an independent source. I, I'm also going to tell you when you're doing a great job. Like, hey, you've really got that right. Let's build on that. And the integrity part. Well, look, it, integrity is at the core of compliance and ethics. I mean, we, we've kind of moved away, unfortunately. I, I, it's, I think we don't, we don't focus enough anymore on, on the philosophy that underpins the concept of integrity and ethics. But, for instance, you can have all the transparency in the world, but if you don't have accountability behind that and you don't have integrity in, in what you do, it fails. The concept of independence and understanding we do this because this is the right thing to do, that this, this is better for society, this is better for our, our own employees. This isn't just the, the letter of the law, this is the spirit of the law, and it's embracing that. It's, it's not compromising. It's not phoning it in, if you will. Now, let me uh, go back to the focus on either the regulators or more of a global enforcement uh, take, which was, do you see the G20 as moving in this direction, sort of in concert with the Biden administration? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anybody who was paying attention to a recent G20 meeting, uh, it's their anti-corruption working group, it was just earlier this month, November 4th, they issued their anti-corruption action plan for 2022 through 2024. And the G20 made it clear, now more than ever, the fight against corruption requires increased, intensified international cooperation and renewed global commitment. I mean, they're, they're really calling for a spirit of zero tolerance of corruption and, and through that, through an ex enhanced exchange of information, right? The sharing of lessons learned and the sharing of good practices. They want, they want this to spread far and wide. So the, the ACWG, uh, as they're known, I mean, they, they're, they're about a decade old now. Um, but this newly issued plan has collectively developed commitments from all 20 nations and products on countering corruption through prevention, criminalization, law enforcement, international cooperation, there's that word again, or two words, and asset recovery. And, and what is also sort of a harbinger of what is likely to come out of this is that the G20's stated intention is to foster the establishment or reinforcement of protection frameworks for, say, witnesses and whistleblowers. That's, that's key to know. So more likely cases coming to the attention of regulators. And two of the three substantive areas that the G20 members uh, stated that they intend to work on over the next three years, private sector transparency, integrity, there is that word again, and accountability, any money laundering, beneficial ownership transparency, and again, international cooperation. You know, so we've... We saw multinational banks right now, right? They've already seen this uptake uh, in whistleblower complaints. This renewed attention to combating money laundering, kleptocracy is likely going to result in, the, in many more cases. And, and the push by the G20 for greater transparency, well, again, I'll say transparency means nothing without accountability. The, the two go hand in hand. Greater transparency equal greater enforcement. They've, they've said it. G20 countries are going to lead by example. They're going to be leading and exploring ways to strengthen joint or related anti-corruption investigations. They're going to, you know, say to the world, we're denying safe haven to kleptocrats. Um, you know, they, they ended the report um, by noting that they will also be exploring options for how they can promote a variety of measures such as procedurally fair non-trial resolutions to corruption cases 
and non-conviction-based uh, or civil asset recovery. What's that translate to? More DPAs and increased use of monitors. Uh, you know, more than 30 countries have at least one non-trial resolution system to resolve foreign bribery cases. And the majority of those 30 have more than one system. So if you, if you look at the past 20 years of foreign bribery cases, out of some 840 plus cases, 80% of those concluded through non-trial resolutions. And you're hearing it not only from DOJ, you're hearing it now from the G20. More non-trial resolutions. That means more monitorships. Mangal, are there other enforcement uh, avenues or regulators that we might not typically think of in the anti-corruption realm? Uh, we had a CFTC action uh, mm -hmm. earlier this year, which I know drew a lot of uh, eyebrows. But are there any areas that you might uh, see or pretend to see some uh, some sectors of enforcement that we haven't typically seen in the past? Yes, sector wise. I mean, again, coming back to um, you know the state DOJ state intention to point more monitors, G 20s plan, Biden administration crackdown. I mean, something here that may not have. Um, some people may not have picked up here uh, is corporate transparency and um, focus again on money laundering, uh, preventing kleptocrats, right? No safe haven. I think we're going to start to see in the wake of the Pandora Papers, law firms, big multinational law firms being called to heel for their um, involvement in facilitating kleptocrats uh, and offshore and corporations. I think we're going to see um, much more in the banking sector. I, I think we're going to be surprised by some of the areas uh, where enforcement is coming. Um, you know, we may see more big tech and that's being driven uh, really out of the EU in those settlements um, but it, it comes down again to uh, ethics, transparency, their roles. This should be prompting sort of a new resolve to bring company uh, to ethical decisions, right? To emphasize the importance of building culture uh, with integrity at the center of it to combat corruption, laundering, kleptocracy, uh, because um, oh, yeah. it's not going to be just the FCPA cases, I think, that are coming down the pike. Well, McCall, unfortunately, we are near the end of our time, but I was wondering if our listeners wanted uh, any more information on affiliated monitors, where could they go? No, oh, well, they can go to our website, affiliatedmonitors.com. Um, and that's probably the, the best place. You can always contact us, email, phone call. We're really just a call away. Well, Mikhail, uh, thank you again for taking the time to visit with me, and I look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you, Tom. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of Not Your Father's Monitors. I hope you will join us again for our next episode where I visit with Christina Ravello, and we discuss how ethics and compliance assessments can help drive more compliance companies. For more information on Affiliated Monitors, check out their website, www.affiliatedmonitors.com. This special podcast series, Not Your Father's Monitor, is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.